computer. Hi, and welcome to a special edition of Issues and Answers with me, Elvis Thomas, Acting Assistant Superintendent of Police. With me this morning is Constable Number 694, Travis Chico, who is the President of the Police Welfare Association. Good morning, Mr. Chico. Good morning, sir. And thank you for coming and being a guest <laughs> on Issues and Answers. I see you smiling already, yeah. so you have quite a few good things <laughs> in store for us. Most definitely. Yes. Now, I just said that you're from the Police Welfare Association. Um, tell us a little bit about the Police Welfare Association. What, what is it all about? Okay, well, the Police Welfare mm -hmm. Association is basically an association, staff association, which would represent the interests of members in the police, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. The um, association is very distinct from the operations of a trade union. Mm -hmm. And one of our key or one of our major functions as an association is to really, is to really Mm, um, it's really pushed the agenda of the organization in total. So whilst a union may be staff, staff, staff aligned, the welfare association is organization oriented in terms of dealing with the issues faced by the organization. Okay. So when did you become the president of the association? I became the president of the welfare association on the 15th of March, 2007. 2007? Yes. Or 2017? 17. Okay, 2017. Okay, you, you probably so had <laughs> the longest tenure as, as, as well as 2017 of the welfare. And how has it been for you? Um, it has been, it has been um, a smooth sailing period um, with a few issues that we would have to, we, we would look into as an organization. Um, as the Welfare Association, when I came in, um, there were a few challenges that... Um, we inherited from past executives and um, executives and some of them that we've dealt with and some of them that we're hoping that in the not too distant future we could bring them to a conclusion but the welfare association generally has really met one of its major objectives which is to ensure that police officers remain productive and to ensure that our officers are efficient and could re and to reduce wastage in the organization so it's been a struggle whilst we, we, we advocate for, for, for salary, we advocate, advocate for working conditions, but based on the constitution of, of, of the Welfare Association in, 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 in section 40 of the Police Act and, and, and subsection 2 would have spo we, um, speaks to police, the Welfare Association remaining an association that would look into the effective running of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. So, um, having, having said, said this, when did this Police Welfare Association start? Well, the Police Welfare Association um, commenced in 1969. However, as the years w um, go has gone by, there's been a lot of evolving of the Welfare Association. Um, gone are the days when a Welfare Association would have had one representative, would just look into <coughs> the general running of the organization. But the, by then, the organization was a very small organization. But now you have a, a fully a fully a fully staffed executive which would, which would have encompassed the president a vice president a treasurer secretary assistant secretary assistant treasurer and the pro and also an assistant pro the welfare association also has what what, what is called branch board so we represent from the ranks of constables as far as inspectors so the welfare association has representatives <coughs> on each of the bodies so you'd have five but men from the sergeant, five, five from the con um, corporals, five from the inspectors, mm -hmm. and seven from the constables, which would have been the biggest pool in the membership of the organization. So it is actually the, the, the Welfare Association's first function actually starts at the branch board's level in terms of selecting persons at branch board level to represent the rank on the central executive of the Police Welfare Association. You just um, mentioned that representation is made only up to the rank of inspector. Yes. What happens with the rank of inspector um, above? Well, above the rank of inspector, 
it is with the Public Service Commission. Mm -hmm. However, um, <coughs> there have been talks in terms of <coughs> having what we call a gazetted branch board where the Welfare Association now would have encompassed gazetted officers from the ranks of assistant superintendent to a, acting to assistant commissioner of police where these men would have elected among themselves somebody would represent them on central com on the central committee who would look into issues cons go issues surrounding the ranks that they are represented that they are in so would that be in keeping with the police act that you mentioned a while ago no, it would, would have, be it would have to be an amendment we would have to write to the governor general through the commissioner of police so that we can make an amendment in the police act that would have um, so that would constitute the forming of such a branch board. Okay. Um, do you have an office where you operate from and what really happens there? Yes, um, the Welfare Association has a police welfare a secretariat. And um, what happens at the secretariat is that um, we run a number of um, um, programs at the, at, the, at, the, at the secretariat. So we have our police distress fund our police scholarship fund. We also have our NAGICO, police, NAG, police welfare, NAGICO, health insurance. And of late, we've opened what we call the Police Welfare Association Fund, which would look into the daily runnings of, of the Welfare Association itself. So there are a number of other initiatives that we're hoping in the not, not, not <coughs> too far from now that we could um, actually look upon in terms of how well we could maintain um, the interest of our members in terms of whether we look at um, assisting them in, in some fi financial challenges, financial issues. So the Welfare Association has a number of items on its, on, its, on its agenda and we're hoping that with time, maybe continuity from one executive to the next, that by, within tw by 2025, we would have gotten our, our proper mandate and staffing in terms of really representing the interests of our members. You mentioned four areas here and I would really like to to touch on them um, the first one we will do is the distress fund mm -hmm. um, so you can speak about it briefly we may not we may come right. back to it after, after the break so you can speak to the distress, right, because fund. distress fund is a fund which was set up by then Commissioner Cuthbert Phillips and what, what the real intention of that fund is to really assist police officers with distress so after hurricanes um, during the time of death um, you have persons who may have suffered um, a, a house fire, natural disasters. So that's where the Police Welfare Association Distress Fund would come in to really um, assist those members in, 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 in bringing them back on, on the feet. So um, the Distress Fund is, re is, is, is really managed by the Commission of Police, who is the chair. And the Welfare Association has members on that committee to really look into some of the applications that we receive. The Distress Fund <laughs> pays so far for parents of police officers who, who would pass and also um, the children of police officers and um, we also look at um, medical issues where persons genuinely need mm -hmm. assistance the welfare association would come in and chip in something something small i can tell you that um, the fund is not the healthiest of all because mm -hmm. the numbers have grown and while the numbers grow you have we have a bigger payout and the contribution remains the same. So um, we also look into to go back into the rules of such a co um, the fund and hoping that through the commission of police who's chair that we could re increase it slightly, not really making it a burden on the pockets of our officers, but to really show them the disparity of what they are paying now and what they can pay and the increases or other or the, or the greater functions that the fund can serve in terms of assisting them. Thank you very much, Mr. Chico, for now. We have been listening to a special edition of Issues and Answers with me, Elvis Thomas, Acting Assistant Superintendent of Police, and my guest, Constable 694, Travis Chico, who is the President of the Police Welfare Association. We will be right back. Pamela, I noticed that you built your retaining wall on my property. You will have to give me my land back or compensate me for that. My contractor isn't dumb. I trust that he will not build anything on your property. Where is your proof? Let's go to court. This situation does not require you to go to court. Looks like we have to go through mediation here. Mediation is a way people resolve conflicts like this. Someone, a third party, comes to speak to both parties. This person is called the mediator. The mediator is impartial. He or she makes sure that communication between both parties is effective and efficient. So. 
the mediator is a judge? No, the mediator is not a judge. Mediators, unlike judges, do not decide cases or impose settlements. Let me get a mediator to handle this retaining wall and that kitchen. Kitchen? Yes, your kitchen also falls on my land. Let me call the mediator. You have been watching a special edition of Issues and Answers with me, Elvis Thomas, Acting Assistant Superintendent of Police, and my guest, Mr. Travis Chico, Constable Number 694, President of the Police Welfare Association. The discussion has been very good, Mr. Chico, and we will go right into it. Yeah. We were speaking about the Police Welfare Association yes. and some of the areas that it covers. We just spoke about the distress fund, right. and now we will be looking at the scholarship fund. Right. So tell us about the scholarship fund. Right, so the Police Scholarship Fund was again set up by the then Commissioner, and um, mm -hmm. what we have with the Police Scholarship Fund is that every police officer who has a child who has gone through secondary school level from Form 1 to Form 5, the Welfare Association has the responsibility of purchasing school supplies and books for that child. When a child gets to Form 5, the Welfare Association also pays the CXC of that child. The scholarship fund is basically set up in order to assist our members to, to really re take off the plight of buying books and you know the expenses allocated to, 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 to such. So the Welfare Association, the fund is organized to really take off the burden from the membership. It's a fund that members contribute to. And um, it's a fund that, that, that is only is strictly for scholarship. Um, I think to date we have 374 students on the scholarship. Um, <coughs> and and we, we, we have, a, I think we one of the, we, the police force, the Welfare Association Scholarship Fund is the biggest Spain scholarship fund in St. Lucia. We have the most students on our scholarship, and um, I, on average yearly, we spend in the, in, in the amounts of almost three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars as it pertains to scholarship, and these and these are direct direct um, awards in terms of monies received from the membership. We end up we spend it back in in order to ensure that the children receive all the books as it pertains to the education because the welfare association is, is is of the view that education is very important in today's society and we try our best to make sure that all students receive such a scholarship and i believe that um most of our viewers would be of the belief that the welfare association is strictly there for when there are issues to be That's right. you know going out on the media <laughs> or defending police officers but here we have some very good information yes we just spoke about the distress fund right. and now we're hearing about the scholarship, scholarship fund, fund That's right. where you know um this this is such an important you know um thing and it, it is really good and i guess what is the feedback from from the parents oh yeah i can tell you um a lot of the parents are very thankful for such a fund especially some of our police officers who have um um children um in in different communities and some you know who have not really seen the fathers very often and <laughs> when the time for scholarship come and the welfare association some persons have the view that because they don't live with the father that they are not entitled mm -hmm. but when they come and inquire and we say yes um by virtue of him being a child and the name features on the birth certificate, that child is entitled. You could see the relief on the face of those parents. And, and some of them are very grateful. We get a lot of parents returning those books. And mm -hmm. when those books are returned, the Welfare Association in turn run a little, a, little, a little program where we assist students who are not parents, mm -hmm. who are not children of police officers, and we give them those books once they are in good condition. We, we, we hand over the books to students. We also assist sometimes with supplies, notebooks mm -hmm. to, to, to um, children in need. So the Welfare Association does not only assist the children of police officers with the scholarship fund, we also assist many children within the various communities of St. Lucia. So if um, one was a police officer and maybe through resignation or um, retirement they've left, but their child uh, have not gone through right. um, that process in terms of receiving the benefits. Can that child still... Yes, that child is still entitled to receiving the benefits. Mm -hmm. um, what we find a lot of the times is that we encourage the members when they are retiring or when they are or, or resigning from the organization, when they move on to greener pastures, they could still make the contribution mm -hmm. to the welfare association in order for us to continue assisting them as the, as, as, as the child goes through, through the secondary school 
education schooling. Okay, very good. We'll now move on to insurance. You, you spoke about yes. Najiko insurance. Right. So tell us some more about that. Okay, the Welfare Association, in spite of the collective agreement where police officers are entitled to free medical and it would be have been in, in gov the government hospitals, the Police Wel Welfare Association went a step forward. We felt that it was fit for us to, because of the nature of the job, mm -hmm. that we should have had an insurance covering us. And it is an insurance paid by, ours, by police officers. And the, purpose, the sole purpose of insurance is for better, and better quality health care. So um, the insurance covers air transport, air ambulance. It covers emergency, um, emergency medical. It also covers, it, it has a small life. So if a police officer would have passed, during the time he, 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 he remains a member mm -hmm. of the insurance, he would receive a $50,000 life. His family would receive it. So the Welfare Association has always had the drive to bring more members on the, on, on the plan. And we believe as we bring members on the plan, we could always go back to the provider and renegotiate the terms and conditions because we'd have brought in more persons onto the plan. But the, welfare, the insurance run by the Welfare Association, I believe, is one of the better insurances on the island um, in terms of our relationship with the provider. Um, the Welfare Association continues to see a lot of um, speedy care when it comes to um, when we call the provider and we say, mm -hmm. you know, a police officer has to go for emergency medicals in Matnik. They, they, they're very accommodative to offer. And, and this is the sole intention of the, the welfare insurance, to make sure that officers who are part of this insurance can receive quality care that we would not be in a position to know that we've lost an officer because the, he, he could not have received the care necessary for him to survive. So this is why we have the, the, the insurance and we continue to urge our members to come on board and take advantage of such an initiative by the Welfare Association. Okay. Can any um, of the persons from the other essential services be part of that insurance or is it solely for police officers? Well, it, it is solely for police officers and staff. So we have some of our, our <laughs> civilian staff mm. within the police force who are part of our insurance, like our secretaries and our, our clerks. They are afforded the opportunity. But I know some of the essential services have their own insurances, but we cover police officers and the staff or who are directly related, who are directly associated to the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Okay, briefly, um, can you tell us in terms of some of the projects that your association um, is working on now? Well, as, we, as, as, we, as you would be aware, um, pretty soon we'll be celebrating the, um, another part, um, the anniversary of the passing mm -hmm. of Randy Abbott and the mm -hmm. Welfare Association this year will hold its second anniversary of the Randy Abbott football tournament. Um, the Welfare Association has paid a number of opportunities in terms of writing to the commissioner in terms of enacting a lot of policies mm -hmm. within the uh, Moral St. Lucia Police Force. So mm -hmm. we look at our professional standards, we look at um, absente absenteeism within the organization, and a number mm -hmm. of other projects. Um, at present, we have a small tuck shop being run by the, by the, by the, by the um, Police mm -hmm. Welfare Association. And what we're also looking to do, not too far from today, is to write to the commissioner so that we could have a barber shop. And what, we, what the sole intention is to, 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 to have a young man who, who, who is unemployed and who has the ability to see whether or not it would be possible to fit him within the headquarters area so that so it is also considered as a crime fighting initiative as well. So um, the Welfare Association has a number of, of, of plans that um, we believe um, could happen and could, um, we could enact so that we could really gain the interest of our members. However, um, it, 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 the time period as, as a Welfare Association one year is very short and there's, there's little that you could accomplish between such a time. But um, we also believe that if we, if we do the right things and we pass on the information to other executives and they continue, then you would see a more effective and a more vibrant association. So this is where we are as an association now. And um, we continue to, to take ideas from our membership. We continue to ask civilians who, who have an, 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 an interest in, in policing to, mm -hmm. to also bring forward their ideas as the, the Welfare Association could better the, um, the management or the runnings of the Welfare Association and also the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. Speaking of time, this is <laughs> all the time we have on this segment of Issues and Answers. You've been watching a special edition of Issues and Answers with me, Elvis Thomas, Acting Assistant Superintendent of Police, and my guest, Mr. Travis Chico, Constable Number 694, 
president of the Police Welfare Association. I wish we had more time, <laughs> you know, for this, but then we will get some more time after the other point. Thank you for watching and goodbye.